In the world of the PMP exam, it is very important that you do not think in a linear manner only. You also need to think in a dynamic, multi-dimensional manner. People are used to watching videos where you go from one process to the next in the knowledge area or from one process in a process group to the next in the process group. But today we're going to take a look at these quality data flows and we're going to be taking a look at how quality interacts with other processes in other knowledge areas because it is important that you understand the interconnectivity of processes for your exam. So I call this events leading up to defect discovery and deliverable rejection in quality control. So it starts off with direct and managed project work. You do know that this is a process that gives you three unique outputs. It gives you WPD, it gives you the issue log, and it gives you deliverables. But let's focus first on the deliverable aspect of what this gives you. So we see an arrow coming from direct and managed project work, and that arrow is really representing the flow of deliverables to another process. But I want you to take note of this next process I'm gonna show you. This is managed quality. And did you know that in managed quality, even before your deliverable is produced, you are checking not the product, but the process. Because managed quality is code for quality assurance. And that's where you check the process to ensure that your processes are actually working, to ensure that people are following the process, and also to realize if a process is broken somewhere down the line. So we have deliverables, which come out of direct and manage project work, these deliverables go to control quality. What are we doing control quality? Well, in control quality, we are going to be checking to ensure that the deliverable is fit for use, conforms to requirements, and will most likely satisfy the customer. So we have the lady on the conveyor belt taking a look at the deliverables. She decides this is not a good deliverable. In fact, there's a defect. So we get a change request raised from control quality. That change request goes to none other than perform integrated change control. And in perform integrated change control, this is where the change control board or whoever is the approving authority, this is where they decide whether to approve the change request or reject it. In this case, we'll go ahead and say that it was approved, but I want you to take note of the fact that this approved change request it cycles back into direct and manage project work. It's very important that you realize in direct and manage project work, we have three possibilities of what this change request could be. It could be corrective action, it could be preventive action, it could be defect repair. Now, other dimensions of the project could also have updates raised in an approved change request. So when you take a look at these processes, it is important that you look at them as an interconnected web of events. You cannot just look at plan quality management, manage quality, control quality, no, 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 no. That's not how it happens. That's not how it happens. So there's a lot of interconnectivity between these processes. And don't forget that this approved change request is also gonna be an input to none other than control quality. In other words, we see this approved change request also going into control quality. Why? Because the idea is that on the second go round, when we finally get this approved change request, we are going to inspect in the approved change request by making sure that what was approved is not only done, but is also checked. And hopefully on the next go round, we will not have a change request from the lady on the conveyor belt. Hopefully we're going to get something else. So there we have it, the arrow showing you approved change request goes into control quality. It also goes into direct and manage project work as we're gonna rework this. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at what exactly happens when the lady on the conveyor belt ends up approving the deliverable. In other words, the lady on the conveyor belt, what happens when she sees the deliverable as being fit for use, conforming to requirements, and most likely will satisfy the customer? That will be our next video. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.